Hello and welcome to this episode of Rally Point, where we are laying down the law, specifically talking about the Call of the Beastman campaign pack, which is available to pre-order now or to purchase on the 28th of July. We are going to be talking about the law of the Beastman, and I'm here with Peter Stewart. Hi there. Uh, so, Peter, what do you do? I'm a writer here at Total War. I'm also Andy Hall's stunt double. So, uh, the history of the Beastmen. Eons ago, there was a massive influx of chaotic and magical energy, which gave birth not only to the winds of magic, but the race of the Beastmen as well. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, a very long time ago, in the Warhammer world, it's worth pointing out, not the real world, the chaos energy just poured in and seeped into the planet, into the world, into the trees and the ground, uh, and it transformed the beasts and the men there into these horrible aberrations and mutations, which came to be known as the Beastmen today. So as a result, they're this really strong combination of animal strength and speed and human intellect combined, which makes them absolutely ferocious and mental That's combat. true. I would not want to go up against one in the Dark Alley or any other alley. Also, their connection to Chaos means they have a really strong command of magic, so they'll have access to the Law Beasts and, of course, their own law. The Law of the Wild, indeed, that the Bray Shaman and Malagor, who we'll talk about later, will have access to. Um, using the power of nature to both enhance your own troops and wreak devastation upon your enemies. So we'll have some information on those laws, we did one on Facebook, so if you want more on what the Law of the Wild does, have a look over there. Um, but they used to own vast amounts of land in the world, but they've now been relegated to the forest since oh, yeah. the dawn of man. They were the commanding power, they had hegemony, um, and then man came along with his technology and his magic and his glittering towers and civilization and cheated what the beastmen, the beastmen think, cheated them out of it. Uh, and they're very bitter and spiteful, particularly towards mankind for that. So as a result, in in the gameplay, they really hate men and civilization, so they've got this horde and gorilla playstyle. They don't settle. No, they do not. Um, and, you know, as a horde, fortunately, they've got this bray herd mechanic, which is very similar to um, the Greenskins' war, as, as we like to say. As we like to say, yes, we like to say, oh, the war. The yeah, war. They, yes, the more you fight, the more the... the the, the bar will fill and when you hit a certain threshold you'll get to have some more armies, more stacks to come along and help you fight in your campaign. Uh, the more you fight, they'll stick around with you, the less you fight they might disperse. What's really good about that as well is as a horde mechanic, unlike the Chaos Warriors, if you've got two hordes close to each other they suffer attrition as a Not result for of the infighting. Beastmen. Not yep. for the Beastmen. So herdstones are really the focal point of the encampment for the Beastmen. It's true. In mechanical terms, they are the centre of the settlements from where you can, when you're in encampment stands where you can build your recruitment centres, your growth centres, etc, etc. Um, in law terms, the herdstone is where uh, the Beastmen gather and pray for victory, they get drunk and they revel and do other things, also they fight for control of the herds. Uh, it's where a lot of Beast Lords are made and unmade around the herdstone. Whoever has the biggest horn is the biggest boss. That is indeed true of Beastmen and in real life, Joey. Of course. Uh, so let's talk about our legendary lords that we're going to have available to us in the mini campaign. This is called An Eye for an Eye. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really focusing on you playing as Kazrak the One-Eye. You are Kazrak leading the herd on his attack of the Drakbold. So what what is the point of this mini campaign? What is your objective? As Kazrak, your objective is to get to the other side of the map, to Middenheim and to uh, take down Boris Todbringer, your eternal rival. Your arch nemesis. He, he is, rather. He took your eye in, a, in an earlier encounter, which is, you're looking pretty grisly because of it, Joey, i got to say. Oh, sorry. Um, and you have sworn revenge because no man will take from you what you can't take from him. That's just the nature of the beast. So he's a melee specialist. He's got a, got a whip, too. He is... I, yeah, of all the beasts I wouldn't want to encounter in a dark alley, I wouldn't want to encounter Kazrak the most. Big horn, enormous, much bigger than other beastmen, carrying a, a multi, a multi-tailed whip, uh, which he uses to drive both his forces and to assault his enemies. Uh, he also likes to gore with those enormous horns of his. Uh, so that's the mini campaign. Your objective is to take down um, and, I guess, take the eye of old Boris Todbringer. If you can get to him. So in the grand campaign, you'll also have access to Malagor. You would do. The Crow Father, as he's called. And he is the epitome of the devil in, in contemporary terms, what we would call the devil. Um, mothers warn their children about the Crow Father um, and about Malagor, who is just seen as the epitome of darkness and chaos. They say wherever the Crow Father walks, death follows in his wake. And that's very much, very much true. Crops wither and die, uh, and things just die around him as he walks. And as he goes through battle, he has access to the Law of Beasts, the Law of the Wild, which he uses to just devastate his enemies and just wreak darkness. He's just a bad, bad man. So that has been this episode of Laying Down the Law for the Call of the Beastman campaign pack. You can pre-order now on Steam, and the links for that will be down below. 
Thank you for watching this episode. Thank you, Peter, for joining us. Absolutely my pleasure. And remember to leave a lovely comment, please, in the comment section. And let us know what you would like to see in the future. Thanks for watching. And don't forget. See you soon. Thank you.